Well, hello and welcome to The Wrap. This is a show rounding up all things Zwift from the last week. We're talking racing, we're talking events, we're talking tech and fashion. We are live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, today is episode number 69, Thursday, November 9th, 2023. And we've got a lot coming at you. I'm Nathan Guerra. Anna Russell is sat next to me virtually coming out of New Zealand. I'm in the USA in a cold Wisconsin. So uh, today on The Wrap, we're going to be talking. There's a lot actually going on in pre-show. We were like trying to like slim things down and also add all the exciting things. So we've got a ton to talk about. Not only ZRL with all of the things that are be coming in with Cy Bradley leading us through Zwift Racing League and the schedule and the races. Each and every one of the races will be going through the maps and what they're um, those courses and how to race them. It's going to be pretty fun and cool. But there's a Zwift update that actually has some pretty significant changes. One point five two. One of them being speed changes on dirt to all the bikes, which is pretty crazy and maybe has eliminated the bike swap. There's going to be some opinions on that. That also has raised some questions about other ways to measure speed in Zwift that might not just be straight speed tests. Uh, Zwift championships, this Zwift games, it's Zwift games, uh, but it's its own Zwift championship that has been announced that's coming out this next spring, it looks like. And from what has been said, 
the most democratic process of racing that has ever been experienced in virtual cycling is what seems to be the claim that's coming. That's pretty freaking cool. So thanks. We're at the Academy kind of not discovering a new pro, but like <laughs> anybody can get involved and race to the highest level through the Zwift games. Uh, we'll have more on that. We'll be talking about the Zwift Grand Prix today that went down and how I'm still old man, Gara. Tiny Races has its own page, which is pretty cool. You can find all your race results and all types of more stuff that uh, is happening over on Zwift Insider, probably mentioned as well. So, uh, our jersey pick of the week, the new... its that, is, That's the one you talked about doing a uh, Zwift tutorial, right? That's the tutorial yeah. one? So, it's mm -hmm. the intro, intro kit that you unlock. So, uh, let us know what you think about that in the comments. We'll take a look at that as the fashion at the end. So, well, there's a lot to talk about. I think I even slimmed it down besides that. But first and foremost, as always, we talk about what we've been up to in relationship to Zwift. And Anna, how's your week been and uh, what you've been up to? Okay, we'll keep this tight because there's a lot going on. And I do want to say I listened to the show back from last week and I was like, I don't know if we had a, much to talk about because we literally talked about the color purple for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and I was listening going, oh, my God, I bet everyone's tuned out by now. So um, the, the lack of topics last week has led into like uh, abundance of topics this week. So it's great. Um, so I got off the podcast last week and – started prepping for my big gravel, my first gravel race. So that was awesome. Oh, I yeah. did it on. Oh, yeah. dude, there's, there's so much going on, but like I meant to message you and be like, how did it go? It looked, but I mean, I got the oh. message. It felt like through social. It sounds like you really enjoyed it. Oh my God. It was amazing. Like I'm already like, I need another one straight away. Like <laughs> what? I arrived. So we got there and I was like, Oh, there's a DJ. This was at like nine in the morning. There's a D or eight in the morning. There's a DJ like <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this is like the I did not expect the first <laughs> words. Did my first gravel race. I got there at nine in the morning and it was a rave. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Like some fire pits going on and just like everyone like super laid back and chilling with their little like mugs of coffee. And oh my gosh, I was like, this is This is like, New such Zealand a great gravel. Time. Whoa. Oh, like... So rad. And then there was like these ex pros there. There's a current, um, she's the under 19 mountain bike world champion, downhill, New Zealander. So she was out there doing it. So it was like wicked. Like it was just a so low key, but some real hitters. So it was fun. Uh, the race was awesome. Um, yeah, loved it. The gravel, I was quite nervous about the descents, but this was like, what you would call champagne gravel. So it was like very nice. And there was only one really sketchy descent that I was just like, I gotta ask, I gotta ask. Of, did you yeah. learn that term this weekend or did you already know that term prior to this weekend? <laughs> just wondering. <laughs> Cause like you totally said that with a look like I'm in the, like it was like your friend who I wasn't know. into something at school <laughs> comes up to you next to the locker after they learned, Hey, do you know like champagne gravel, man? Like <laughs> <laughs> It was like that. Now I'm like, Oh yeah, this was champagne gravel. It was great. Um, and so I like, I went into the event feeling like a bit of a newbie, but I've come out now and I've got like a new pair of gravel shoes. Thanks to, I was wearing these old mountain, <laughs> like weird mountain biking ones. But now Jen, Jen Real sent me a pair of like these new Shimano gravel shoes. And I'm like, Brad, and they gave me a spot prize. So I got this new POC gravel specific helmet. So Whoa. I'm POC now, makes like, some pretty next, cool headwear oh, for sure yeah awesome. good stuff um so that was rad and then woke up the next day and did the triathlon so did a 40k bike ride with a 10k run and there was a swim and on my tt bike i stayed in aero position and didn't crash i was like yelling at the group to be like 30 second pulls on the front oh, like just really into it so that was really fun it felt super good pretty smashed the early in the week just with that and then last night Carsten or no because he was um he was on it he was watching last night uh that set again the five by five minutes yeah so like hit that last time i was crying at 250 yeah <laughs> with yeah, a yeah. Lot now of, we like, gotta know now zeros. we gotta know if you because yeah, okay. if you don't remember those listening anna talked about failing this workout these anaerobic efforts and you're going to be doing them over the next weeks every specifically. week yeah yeah so we wondered so this time i started at 260 
I was like, okay, will I be able to keep this up for the second one? Did 260, did all of the first four at 260, no failure. I mean, a few tears as anyone who tuned in knew. I was like, <laughs> but I didn't fail. Last one pushed it up to 265 and didn't fail. Like, I mean, it, it was pretty like, you know, cadence of like 70 near the end and like grinding, but that's a pretty made good it. turnaround. So I was stoked and my heart rate maxed out at like 174. And last time I couldn't get above 168. So I was like, okay, I'm like, I'm kind of getting into the herd a bit more and just being able to like actually. When did like you do, do this? It, you know? What day did you do this? Yesterday. Yesterday. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And did you, huh? Really interesting. So two, a couple of things. I'm like, this is the first time I've heard you talk about what's been going on in your competitive workout life in like a while where you're like, yeah, blah, this is amazing. Like, what's <laughs> going on? And like, I'm succeeding in my work. And I'm like, is somebody making you rest? Like what's going on? Or like, is some like, what's that? Or is this just like you did a gravel and gravel's kind of like out of control a little bit. It's not the like triathlon <laughs> and like, you kind of like got a little bit more into like openness and creative side of things or yeah, I don't know something's I going so. on with Anna over here, like gravel impact. <laughs> this is the spirit of gravel. <laughs> Chat's already coming in. She's now it's like yeah. VO twos are no problem. I'm super chill. Like, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say I was super chill. Uh, I was very uh, on yeah, like yeah. those five minutes. But with the gravel, I found like, and you, I know you talked about it when you were in your mountain bike season, but you do the training and you kind of know you're doing all right. Like you kind of look and you're like, okay, I think I'm all right. Honestly, every hill on that gravel race, it was like I was flying. I just, I got to the end of 100K and I was like, let's do it again. You know, like, I was just like, this is awesome. Like, I just, there was a real flow. And I think it just gave me this, like, buzz of, oh, like, it's paying off. Hmm. And so it makes you want to do more, you know? Whereas when you're just kind of grinding away with nothing to show for it, you're sort of like, it's, I'm just grinding. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, what am I doing? That's base life. Base life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's exactly what it right. can feel like. You're just lost in, <laughs> yeah. lost in zone two. That's like, there's got to be like a word name for that. Like lost in space zone two. Oh, God. <laughs> like, what am I doing? Uh, um, what what, am I what up to? Up Yeah. To? I mean, so this past week I was able to slowly get back on the bike. I was riding every day. Uh, for those that are just coming back in to the podcast, don't know, maybe uh, two weeks ago, literally right before Zwift Grand Prix, I threw my back out pretty worst I've ever kind of thrown it out in my life. Um, had little back issues here and there, but uh, this one was pretty bad. And so I was off the bike for about a week and then got back on the bike one hour a day or so up until about two days ago, I started ramping it up a little bit, uh, just like zone two tempo i could actually complete like an hour of zone two or so and felt kind of like i can accomplish something this is okay i'm not necessarily in pain but i had to still stay, sit pretty upright last night i got on and was like all right i'm gonna do one of the longer new routes and so i went after i think it's like coastals and shorelines and climbs or something i, I can't remember mm -hmm. it's the one that you go up to the top of the radio tower and you you're do the actually coastal. really you're really close to me because when i finished the workout i was like oh who's around i was like oh nathan but then i was oh, like really? going too hard. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and so i i uh i i hit that and up front i was like i'm doing four watts per kilogram or so like and yeah my heart rate's higher and obviously it's like 10 beats higher than usual but at least I can do this and comfortable and no, no pain. <laughs> then at literally midnight last night, I'm halfway up the climb. I get a text, Nathan, we need a favor. And it's like coming through in Italian. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so I'm, you know, I ride for Castelli and ZGP. Oh. Nathan, can you please, 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 we can't get a fifth rider we need. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, guys, luckily I'm like doing kind of openers right now because I haven't done anything since the last race. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm freaking out at this point. I'm like, fine, I'll do it for the team. But if I have to just soft pedal is that okay they're like yeah as long as if you take 80th it doesn't matter like just get across the finish line like get us a point and show up i was like okay cool so then i um 
I, I was not expecting weigh in or all, you know what I mean? The next morning I'm like, oh, no. I've got the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like the whole get ready. Yeah, yeah. Like it's kind of like you prepare yourself for that. I'm like, I'm weighing in tomorrow. I'm racing like Swift Grand Prix tomorrow on London loop reverse. Like, oh my gosh. So then I kind of got, but I also kind of like, I also was in don't care mode. I, and I was able to stay in don't care. I'm just showing up for the team mode until I woke up in the morning and it was two hours to go. <laughs> and then it was ten. I was like, things started oh. to sweat. You know what I mean? You get to a swap a little bit. So I, um, the competitive side came out. So, um, but I am proud of myself when we hit VO two and like they went and we were halfway up Fox. I let them go. Like I was like, yeah. I, I could have kept going. I, and I was like, no, this is going to hurt my back. Like I could tell right yeah. away. And so good job. Yeah. I backed off. I backed off. Cause like part of the reason why I am hurt probably is cause I raced the Alp while I had my back flipping out on me. Right. So like, it yeah. went all in, but what I found, what was crazy, Anna is we got over the top and I got, uh, it was descending box Hill and did a couple of punches, used my anvil and was able to close down some time. And there was like a group 20 seconds up of like six or so. Uh, and I dropped the group I was with because they didn't want to work. I just went to five watts per kilogram and just like st- sat there and I held it like kind of easily. I was like, what the heck? I'm not over because it, it had to be easy because anything that was hard would start mm. pulling on my back muscles. So like mm-hmm. anything. So it was like, wow, this is five watts per kilogram is high tempo for me. This is amazing. Like I was so blown away at how well I was Good. able to hold that. Yeah. You know, like I hope you're like listening to yourself. Yeah, it was really good. So <laughs> I closed it down to that group and I was like, and I come up on him. I'm like, all right, old man Gara coming through. <laughs> it was like, and, <laughs> and then they, and then they proceeded to not speak whatsoever. No chat and drop me going into Fox Hill. I was like, okay, well, whatever. Ah, <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love Grand Prix racing. Yeah, now tell I'm me scared. about this sprint coast thing in Grand Prix. Oh yeah. So. Interesting little t- tidbit here because there's a lot of con- there's been conversation around the new rule with sprint coasting, which I think is a good rule for what it gets done in order to get rid of sticky watt problems with power meters, right? That's the whole point is that like the only yeah. time you ever really see anybody going on off on off on off is usually a manipulation. I mm-hmm. and this was one of the main places I was worried about this, and so when I race. Um, in a TTT or I'm going downhill on Zwift, my main objective is to get over on a TTT downhill or alone downhill is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My main Sorry, obje- yeah. objective is to get over 57 kilometers per hour as quickly as possible and get somebody on the front going downhill with a surge into that downhill super yeah. tuck, right? And then someone else Absolutely. comes around yeah. and someone else comes around. If you're alone, you can also do that where you get into super tuck, you rest for a second, and then you accelerate again. And then you rest for a second and you accelerate. Well, that's sprint yeah. coasting. And I looked at my graph mm. and I was like, I would, de- I would get DQ'd right now. I was like, and it's actually working. I'm on, a, I'm on a power source that is definitely not using sticky watts. And from what I read in the rules, if you're in a long enough downhill like Box Hill – you're probably going to get DQ'd from that rule where you, there's no problem so, with it. Because I get going over the crest to get the speed, and are you then sprinting again to get even more speed? Yes, yes, to yes. Keep that, 100%. Because uh, right. when so, you're in super tuck, do you gradually slow? You gradually slow down. Yes, ah, you do. Okay. You gradually slow down. And the, uh. and the punch gains you five kilometers per hour minimum i think for me at least well, i'm sure they could just couldn't they pull something in there where you could just see it's on a downhill and it doesn't it's maybe not i don't know yeah i don't know how the algorithm advantage. works or whatever because it's an algorithm that picks it up i think so they don't like the point and isn't was it to, though like isn't it the I, I don't know this well enough but i did actually go onto the facebook page and read a whole bunch god, god i must have been so bored but it's like <laughs> three seconds for like three seconds right or something like that that you're coasting so it's pretty short you'd coast for a lot longer on the descent right like I can, maybe like well five i don't seconds. know like okay here i will just uh i can show it to you in a second here but like it's i'm looking at this so i'm coasting for i'm looking at my power file right now and i'm mm-hmm. no i'm coasting for the same as my sprint it's like mm-hmm. five on five off five on five off five on five off boom 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 boom, boom, boom. like 
over and over. Well, and, and, and this isn't me. This isn't me thinking I'm gonna prove you wrong. Like I was doing what? Like I'm racing. I'm just trying to go yeah, as fast yeah. as I can. There's people chasing me. I'm chasing them. Like, you know what I mean? So it's got to be like a. They'd just be able to filter out downhill, surely. Yeah, maybe. But the, here's the thing: I am using a power meter though for my dual source that definitely does sticky watts. So, mm. so like one of the main places that my that that sticky watts would show up for me was on downhills because this is where I would do it the do this mm. thing, and so like yeah 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 it's an exact situation where you're doing the exact thing. But it, it's not cheating in any way whatsoever because you're getting a real power source if you're not getting the sticky issue. So that's the that's where I'm like, ah, you know what I mean? So, oh, just yeah, it's a tough it. one. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Oh, just stop doing it. Like that'd be like saying, like, stop. I don't know. Like if you're in some other video game and like you have like this amazing move <laughs> that like everybody's gonna win with in this situation, but like, no, just don't do that. It's like I don't like. I don't know. Oh, like, don't I've do the thing Sorry, that makes you the fastest? Add, yeah. Like, come on. What if you're going to get DQ'd? But why? That's So, okay, that's the point. Is like, the problem is not the cadence. And that was my point from the get-go, is you can't write yeah. rules. You have to write rules from the right assumption. And the problem is false watts from them being for free. Like, that's the problem. It's not mm. whether or not somebody has a certain cadence. Trying to tell people that they can't have a certain cadence is like telling people they can't ride the Obre bike when they're breaking, Nash, breaking world, champ, world records because you don't like the way that they ride a bike. It's like, dude, mm. like people can ride a bike however they want. Try and keep your rules at the aim of the thing that's actually the problem and not at there's, – there's nothing wrong with people – doing a cadence a certain way. People can do a cadence however the heck they want if it makes them fast. Like, what, what, like, why, you, you know, you see what I'm saying? So uh, the root yeah, of yeah, the yeah, issue yeah. is not a cadence. It's false watts, you know? So yeah. anyways, yeah. So I just, thought, I bring that up <laughs> because like it was a hot topic in the community and there were a few people who got the logical fallacy there that like, not all, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? The, not, like all apples, are fruit all oranges are fruit but not all fruit are apples like it's like it's a logical fallacy like you can't call yeah. all oranges apples you know you're talking two yeah, different yeah, things yeah. here so anyways okay are oh, you coming a, in with your deep coming with your deep thought nathan just <laughs> i'm just just rant about and this. rave yeah i'm like just really I'm, i guess i'm passionate about it because i don't want to get dq'd for something that's totally and also i'm thinking of like some guy who's like, you know, just getting into the race scene and he's doing, he's got a weird cadence, but he doesn't actually have this problem with his power. And then all of a sudden he just gets DQ'd for like doing something on a downhill like this. And he's like, that's stupid. Like what? Like I, you know, anyways, someone who doesn't think about it as much, you know what I mean? Like who just yeah, came into yeah, this yeah. space and is like, well, they'll learn really quick. Cause I'll get DQ'd and then be like, Oh damn, I won't do that again. Here we go. <laughs> problem solved. No, that's not solving the problem. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is the exact, that's tyranny. That's literally tyranny. <laughs> like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am joking, but okay. Yeah, you know what button the push would be, that's for sure. I know. Oh, <laughs> no, God. I'm desperately trying to, like, reverse the button push. Pull it back. <laughs> Pull it back. Okay. I put okay. in the notes. OMFG Zwift Games. So let's chat this before we get Sai on, and then we'll okay. do the version update because it's, it's not as exciting as the Zwift Games um, after we've talked to Sai. So... What the? <laughs> oh my gosh! Kind of came out of nowhere then, too, didn't it? Like, well, they said ages ago. Remember when they didn't get the UCI and they said we're working on a Zwift championship? And I was like, my initial thought was like, oh, that's really cool. It'll just be this one-off event, um, like a Zwift Grand Prix final or something. That's what mm -hmm. I thought. I was like, they'll probably mm -hmm. just add another race to the Grand Prix final. I was like oh no, this is individual racing from the community, mm -hmm. from what it looks like. And read it, it was like, I think I replied to you, I was just like, wow, this is so cool. This is amazing. And I'm like, even this is cooler because I've turned out not been able to do Grand Prix because anyway, blah, blah, blah. They changed the time and now it's 
completely non-doable for me because it's right when I take kids to school. Um, so I was a bit like gutted and now I'm like, oh yes, there's something there. And the events look freaking cool. Like from what I saw, there's like the first one, which is like a sprint one, which is, you know, fun. But the epic one, I love this because Zwift is kind of like with Z racing and stuff, they're all about races that took like 45 minutes to an hour. This one is like, what, 60 kilometers, a grueling race, and will test every facet of a competitor's resolve. It'll use the new coastal causeway, an epic community event. I was like, and it'll take place at the same time as the championship. So what does that mean? So like they'll have a championship, but there'll be a community event at the same time. And any Zwifter can participate in either event without a qualifier. So do they mean either the championship or the community event? Which will, mm. I don't know. So the way that's worded, I was like, what does that mean? So the race will use the new causeway. It will be an epic community event. It will take place at the same time as the championship and any Zwifter can participate in either event without a qualifier. So I don't know what that means. And then it goes into the hill climb championship, Alp to Zwift, which I know that you are like desperate to get back up and like prove yourself fresh and without a sore back, how you can go up the Alps. I bet you were like pumped about this one. Yes, um, I actually was actually. I was like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. this is good. This is good. Although for me, okay, so there's three different ones, right? Three different ones, the sprint championship, the epic championship, and the hill climb championship. I'm a little bit more excited about the epic championship that'll like go, goes across all of the different mm -hmm. ways you can kind of be a competitive cyclist you know i think that's really like 60 kilometers long minimum i think what's cool about this is that you definitely have within the community these you know sprint championship or racing on zwift and like a z racing zrl those kinds of like shorter 30 to to 50 minutes they are more popular because of the time frame i think that people mm. have as far as like i don't even know about more popular is the word they have more attendance i will give it that right give it that because yeah. frr chasing tour you know what i mean like these other single uh individual um competitions like that they get pretty dang popular too it's just yeah the amount of commitment people can give to them but because this is a single event that you can plan for, I think we're going to see Tour de Zwift, Tour Watopia level participation here, especially being a Zwift campaign. I feel like you're just kind of mapping those Tour level participation numbers onto a major racing championship. Yeah, it's like I am like first off very excited, as you can tell, and then second off really want December to roll around so we can find out more about it because that's when they're announcing like exact dates, formats, information, broadcast, prize purse, etc. Because I'm still kind of like, so I still don't get it. So I'm thinking the Zwift games will be across like a February, March period and they might have like, yeah, I just kind of, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how it's going to flow through because obviously for the like people going after prize money it's going to be the full weigh-in dual recording all of that stuff like you're not going to have someone on like z power you know rocking up taking that out so i think i'm just kind of interested and they've shown like the hill climb championship they're going to have a whole bunch of like community group rides around it too if you just want to group ride up the climb so it gives me the feeling but way better but do you remember a, like a year or so ago they had that olympic series and you could just that's exactly go what i thought about too yeah that's totally yeah it kind of reminds me of that but way cooler like yeah just better <laughs> yeah <laughs> same with you but way cooler totally yeah i remember that yeah. and uh the it also kind of i think the participation level too do you remember we had those nations kind of games where it was like the nations against nations do you remember yes, that yeah 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 yeah, yeah early on early yeah. on they, and and i thought we had For really me. high participation there as well like i think we'll get yeah. levels like that as well um yeah I, I think what you were asking about with the qualification i think the idea there is similar to you're stable still able to participate in the event uh in a community level event that is linked to the championship 
even if you don't qualify for the elite championships, right? Like you don't have the equipment or you didn't make it or, you know, there's different kinds of, there's all kinds of reasons why mm. that's a closed elite event that is a like for prize money and qualifying yeah. for that is one thing, but you can still participate in the finals next to it. I think that's the idea there as far yeah. as being able to, but it still has the democratic process because the qualification races in February are what kind of, um, separate that out then in order to have those races that you've qualified for in March. That's why you don't, that's why it was like, you don't have to qualify for the championship races that you can be a part of the community side of them. Uh, I think that's what it was getting at. Yeah. Okay. So it's almost like a WTRL without the team element. So you're just entering individual races and you're doing that. Um, but if you want to be elite, it's kind of like how they were qualifying riders for like Team Canada or Team USA is you had to go do qualification races and then you'd get selected. So I guess it's like that somehow, like you'll you'll do some races and get selected some some way. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think we do have Sai ready to go, I believe. I think he, <laughs> it's early morning for Sai. And I think he is... Is he at a hotel? I think he's actually yes, at he's traveling. a hotel. He's traveling right now. I think he's in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. Cy Bradley's here. Can I put uh, Can I put this uh, infamous virtual Velo network underneath your name now? Is that Is that like Is that are we like super <laughs> official now with that? Yeah, hopefully you can hear me, right? Yeah, I got you. I oh I yeah, yeah. I love your Shaw microphone. You've got a Same great mic going on there. I, I heard you talking about it on on the show, so uh, I, I needed an upgrade, and and that seemed the way oh. to go. It's a good one. It's there we really go. And I one. saw it from Benji on Lantern Rouge. So there we go. We're all just podcasting, mic sharing. We're all following our own heroes. Yes, oh, that's right. I'm the one who needs the upgrade now, man. I've like anybody. Okay. So like the RE 20 is, this is the, yeah. I mean, oh God, don't get him started. I've got a Peugeot over here. Come on now. Okay. I remember the show. I remember the whole discussion with your setup. (laughs) I got some insecurity over here. I was justifying my microphone. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Cy Bradley if, how do, okay if anybody doesn't know Cy Bradley he does all of the recons when it comes to ZRL check out his channel he's been doing a ton of new social media stuff real like quick edits on what you can get into how to get into Zwift stuff giving you information and recently announced the uh, virtual Velo network in the last month in partnership with Zamina K pretty awesome to see welcome to the program Cy and uh, thanks for taking some time at like 545 5 a.m. while traveling to talk about hey. Zwift Racing League. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's uh, always a pleasure to come on to the show. And uh, yeah, it, it is a bit early. I'm actually not in Italy. I got back from Italy. Uh, what day is it today? Friday. Got back from Italy Wednesday night. And then, uh, yeah, had a day with the family and then back down to London today. We've got a, a big fitness event down here with, with Apple today. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a, a late night and an early start this morning. So, if I sound oh a little gosh. bit slower, it's because I've only had four hours sleep so far. Oh, sigh. Jeez. Um, so first off, before we get into ZRR, can I get a quick sentence or two on Zwift games? What do you reckon? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's, it's uh, really exciting. Uh, I put a video out on it yesterday, actually, as we, we, I think we all got the press release through sure. in the morning. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's exciting. I think it's great that for me, there were, you know, the fact that the community can get involved is fantastic. And I think if we can find that pathway, as you both just discussed, that members of the community can make it through to this elite final and in, in whatever your strength in as well, you know, with having this sprint, you know, we, mm. I was talking to uh, Chris about it yesterday on, on a podcast we did with him, you know, and I think he's really excited about the, the epic one, you know, this uh, yeah. 60 kilometer plus ride. Um, so, yeah, I think there's something there for everybody. Um, I'm not sure how much crossover there's going to be with, with ZRL, but I think mm. looking at the, the potential schedule, it looks like there's going to be plenty of flexibility there as well for riders and, and all sorts of regions to be able yeah. to race it. So, no, I think, it, I think it's exciting. I, you know, the plan is to make it the biggest um, you know, Zwift event that they've ever had or the, the biggest cycling esports event there's ever been. So it, it sounds pretty exciting, and, and hopefully there's plenty of chat about it and plenty of promotion and, and that's what we can make it become. 
Yeah, I, I'm loving it too. I think so far everybody's pretty excited. We need a lot more details, but uh, I think they're going to accomplish that. Mm. I think they are going to accomplish the largest uh, racing events we've ever seen with the way the buildup is happening too. I think that's why. We, I also think that's kind of why we don't have all the details because it is still being put together, you know what I mean, in some ways, like as far <laughs> yeah. as how to get it out there. But I think it does need the buildup. I think it does need the buildup. But speaking so of people like me... Yeah. Who, sorry, see the headline. I'm just like, ah, this is amazing. I'm that person who they probably love these little like tidbits to, you know, because I just get so excited and I'm just waiting for every little update. But, um, but, but I think, you know, sorry, Nathan is right there. You know, I think that having that build up is really key. You know, I think it doesn't start until, um, February, February. I think it is next, next, yeah, February 2024, I think, you know, and that is what, if I'm ever critical sometimes of Zwift, what am I, you know, criticisms with the Zwift Grand Prix is no one knew about it until the last minute. The elite racers knew about it. I knew about it. You knew about it, Anna. But actually, in terms of the community, they didn't know early enough. And I don't think there was enough pre-GP uh, talk, but I think they're not going to make that mistake with, with this. You mm. know, This is why we're, we're talking so early about it. So fingers crossed we can all get behind it and uh, yeah, make, make it what it wants to be. Right on. Yeah, well, awesome. Something that has had a lot of build up, obviously, is going to be the Zwift Racing League. The numbers are looking high again. I was talking to Martin this past yeah. week about how the numbers are looking, and it looks like the team signed up uh, already last week had already hit the numbers that they'd seen in the first round, I believe, uh, from what I was seeing. And uh, it's going to be a good one. I raced the course that we have for the first one today, and uh, that's a that, that's a really good court race course. Actually, going back to London, you know, we haven't done a lot in uh, the London maps for for a little while, and it reminded me racing today that that is uh, when you hit the hills, the Surrey Hills. It's such a uh, racing. It's the race courses, you know, with but Box Hill, Fox Hill, etc. Yeah. It's it's going to be a good one. No, I have to agree. I think actually, you know, the round that we've just finished as well, round one, I thought the course selection was about the best we'd, we've had. You know, and obviously there was there's some uh, mm. playing around with the dynamics in the first couple of races. So we, we were kind of learning on the fly as well, which I think added to the experience. You know, that I mean, that first race was just absolutely brutal, you know, with, with the dynamics and riders just literally in one long line. And I think that's continued into this round two you know if i look at all the courses they are racers courses um and actually i think last time i came on uh nathan it was i think it was just me and you um at the time to talk about this i was i was not skeptical but i was concerned that scratch races weren't going to have the same excitement and energy but i have to say i think all our experiences from round one is it absolutely was yeah you know but that was down to the course and that was down to the team and that was down to the riders you know trying tactics you know i listened to you Andrew, with some of the tactics that you were you know uh, discussing with your team at the time i don't think you were riding but you you were discussing with your team and those things are what are make what makes the racing exciting now as well of course the dynamics have added to it but the core selection and i think it's exactly the same with with race one um you know the, the recons out there i raced this again just to refresh myself a couple of weeks ago you know and, and exactly the same you know i think the climb on this with fox hill is a nice balance that it's not too long it's not like a 15 minute epic climb you know it's five six minutes i'm not sure what where you were in, in timing wise last night nathan because i i kind of had it on audio wise but i didn't see the times or the split but it's it's hold on. Can I, just, can I just say the boy, the, the front guys, they went over in 441. I think oh, it was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They, what they is were, this Fox they Hill? Were, yeah. yeah, Fox Hill. They were flying. Yeah. Oh. Over, uh, yeah, they were flying. Go ahead, Dosai. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, us mere mortals, we're talking five, five six, may, maybe a bit longer in some cases. Uh, you know, so it's, it's survival. If you're, you know, if you could dig as deep as you can. Get yourself over the top of that, then it, it, it's survivable. And also, there are some sections, I think, if you're smart, um, you know, you can just get a little bit of draft in that middle section a little bit. It never flattens I off, don't get me your, wrong. Uh, I watched your recon, Sai, and you're like a wily climber up this. <laughs> like, I saw the recon, I was like, oh, he's dropping back, he's dropping back. Oh, no, he's back at the front. Oh, he's dropping back, he's dropping back. And oh, he's back at the front. So you, like, you knew what you were doing up there. You were dropping right when you need to, or you were dying. I wasn't quite sure. But it looks like you're climbing in, like, a smart, kind of the biggest energy conservation way that I saw. Yeah, that, that was, I mean, 
I did drop down to a B, I'll admit, just to ra raise that race. So I, I did feel in, in control. But yeah, there are, though I say there are some sections in there. We had Charlotte Colclough was in there as well, actually. I saw her, you know, yeah. Obviously, really good climb and lightweight, lightweight. So I was kind of w watching what Charlotte was on as well. But yeah, there are some sections, what I say, where it comes down to three or four. And I think if you just drop back a little bit, not too far, because again, you still got to be cautious that you don't let any gap go, because then you're just going to make life difficult for yourself. But if you just feather the, you know, the what's well, I think there are places where you can conserve quite well. Uh, and then, you know, I'd say you've got, you've got that little kick just before it flattens off and dip to the finish. That's always the, the push point where people try and just shake off those last few riders. Um, so yeah, the, you know, the climb, the climb's an interesting one. Sorry, Nathan, go ahead. Yeah. So that's, that was all I was going to say is on that final kick, you know, it is about conserving up until you hit the last minute, two minutes of that climb. And from there, that's where you can turn the screws and drop people and where you just have to hang on if you're on the limit. Like you, you've got, to, I mean, it's 100% worth it on this course to hang on. If you yeah. don't, it's going to be game over. Box Hill on the other side is, is, is steep enough that if they want to give any effort whatsoever, work together at all, or even just send somebody to the front with a roll through, you're not coming back to that pack. It's, 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 it's almost, but if you're able to hang in there, you've got literally a few minutes of just recovery. Like you, like you can just sit in completely on that entire descent. So also Anvil and two Christian... feathers, which is a little different. Go ahead, Anna, go ahead. So I just had a question too, because you, you obviously have that Fox Hill, which like you said, between four to whatever minutes. And then you've got the descent, but you've got a ton of like, you know, Aaron Blake, you would say it's not flat around London, but you know, like fairly flat. Yeah. There yeah. would be an opportunity that you can bridge up, right? If you've been dropped on that hill, there's a lot of time there. Yeah. I mean, in London itself is continuously rolling. You know, I mean, the, the minute you get to that underground station, obviously you've got that little kick out the station. Um, it, I, I'm not sure if you look at that race as well that, that I did the recon with, you'll see in some of the chat, we had three riders make a break. And I'm, I'm ever so, I'm cautious now, you know, with the new dynamics. If, if there's any more than three riders up the road, you've got to keep your eye on that break. You know, it's not, not like it used mm. to be where ah, we're just going to pull them back. You know, it's, the, the game has changed from that aspect. Uh, and again, but you know, as Nathan said there, I just said I said to the guys in the group with me around me, just just pulse the power a little bit coming down this hill. You know, we're not we're not doing this uh, sprint uh, coast aspect, but it's just making sure that someone gets the roll through to keep the pace high, and we close that gap ever so quickly. The power ups there, you know, Nathan's mentioned uh, the anvil and the feather. That anvil, if you get that at the top of Fox Hill. So again, if you've got a decent sized group and there's a ton of anvils dropped. You know, five or plus riders in that front group, maybe, maybe more. Yeah, that gap is going to extend because I imagine the rest of the riders behind that front group will be strung out until you get to the, the probably the second group on the road. So you, it, it's well worth just hanging on, digging deep as you can just to get yourself over the lip of that climb. But London, yeah, is uh, it's constantly rolling. And again, you've got to watch for breaks and moves, particularly on that final time round, once you've done sec uh, Fox Hill for the second time, as we saw last night, actually, I did rewatch the, the finish of last night's race, you know, that where those two riders, um, you know, Lennart and forgive me, I think it was the Hexagon Michael, rider. It was Plantaru, who, who was Plantaru. Doing, Plantaru, yep, uh, from Hexagon, right, who, who went up yes. the road, you know, that, that it's, it's really difficult to close and that can happen because it's constantly rolling. I think the other thing I do mention in the recon, there was that anvil, I mean, we all know where we're going to use the feather. It's it, it's Fox Hill. I don't think there's many opportunities really to to benefit from from using that feather in London. But that anvil coming into that final kilometer, the road goes up and down a little bit. And I I identified in the recon. I noticed uh, Eric also on Zwift and Tyler said the same thing. There is an opportunity to use that anvil in that sprint. So that sprint, mm. that final sprint, if there's a few rounds and the people have managed to hold on to the anvils, that's going to be rapid, really rapid yeah. through there. It was a yeah. good little tip I got from your video was to save the anvil if you can and use it on that last kind of negative two, negative three block before the sprint. So yeah, I'll be trying to do that. Yeah. I think one mistake that's made a lot of times is the mo there's, there, there's anvil panic. There's a, a lot of anvil panic, you know, and even in 
the the Zwift Grand Prix group, there was I saw a lot of Anvil panic. Where like one person, oh, they dropped it. I gotta drop it. I gotta. And it was like, and then you know, I uh, my the first Anvil I got, I just was like, if I don't have to use this, I'm not using this now. And I jumped, got on to the, to the group I was with, and easily just sat in actually while everybody used their Anvil. And then halfway down Box Hill, they weren't working, and I wanted to bridge to the next group. And I was like, I even put a message into a couple guys privately, like, hey, come on now, let's go. But like, really, guys? Like, let's, you know, and, and nobody. I'm like, everyone's doing three watts per kilogram. I'm like, okay. So no one's sprint, co- sprint coasting either on the downhill. And I'm like, I want to catch these guys. So I threw my anvil halfway, and the uh, – gradient on the upper end where most people were dropping the anvil is five or six on the lower end it gets to seven or eight your anvil is stronger at the seven or eight percent negative gradient so i got a gap immediately on that group and they never saw me again because of like i I actually bridged across um where you're saying you could bridge across anna after uh on the on the lower streets of london actually yeah yeah city so i know why there's anvil panic too is did you watch the world champs on that freaking skur in the summit course and if you didn't drop an anvil you were like blowing out the back and didn't make it into yeah. the next round so all these people have ptsd I mean, of like you know, you should have anvils. Anvil. like there is panic just i mean and there should be because they can be gone real quick i mean i've also gotten dropped on that same hill not using an anvil not sprinting up thinking i would get back on a lot easier so you got to make sure you're in the right spot still though if you are going to be like i'm reserving this thing right so <laughs> glasgow crit though okay now i think it's so cool that i was like eh, whatever at first about the zgp and the zrl matching up but now that they're matching up and there's this thursday and then tuesday i feel like it's enough time to digest and look forward a little bit more it isn't like just the day before or the day after and like almost like the same thing is happening i don't know if that makes sense it's almost like it's just a part of it but instead you get this like four or five day preview of what's going to be happening and now i'm looking forward to glasgow crit with the women where it's not like you're watching the same thing over like okay the men did it now the women are doing the exact same thing it's like you get a both of them it's a cool way to kind of look at both races i feel like no, and, and I absolutely, th- this is one of my all-time favorite courses, and I never thought I'd say that about a crit course. The, the only issue I have with this, um, and, and this is maybe, yeah, I don't know, I'll probably, I'll probably get shot down in flames for this, but oh. is the distance, it's five laps. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's short. We, yeah, we did this before, though, right? We did this in the last season, and we did, when it was, it was just 10. introduced, it was like one of the final races. Was it, was it 10, 10 laps? Exactly. <laughs> It was crazy. <laughs> I remember now. I remember. I liked that race. I wow. loved that race, actually. The 10 lapper. I really liked that one. It, yeah. Exactly. It was one of my favorite. It was one of my favorite races of that series because it was so attritional, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm a reasonable sprinter, but not a, you know, a big gun sprinter, but I really like that kicker. That Kai kicker is perfect. You ride that. You got the skill to ride that, roll into it well push over the top on that descent you can you can break people down every single lap on this course and and i think that's what's going to happen on this one it's just, that's the only question mark now is it long enough for you know nine. if you want teams who pick riders to do that i don't think it's long enough now to, nine to be able miles? to break like, it down enough i'm not going to even say 15k because it's under 10 in a in numeric yeah. like for like in, like what yeah that's short. that's really just, short yeah I think um, you could do the the split here. So make C and D 15, A and B, you know, add a few more laps on there. Maybe not 10, because I remember when we reconned that, it was like, whoa, that's insane, yeah. 10 laps. But it was really fun. And i got to say, like, I've dialed in that Clyde kicker climb, like, every time. It's probably so reactionary, it. you it. think? You think it's a little reactionary to the feedback? Because there was feedback that 10 was a ton okay. from the C and the Ds, but I think it, we, it got too far. Like you're saying, we could go just do yeah, like, go like A's and Bs. Yeah, like eight and five, yeah, yeah. And five or something. A's and Bs, yeah. Because, yeah. man, 15K, like that's going to be, like you're going to get warmed up and then be done. I mean, maybe not. It might feel like a freaking Kieran because of like how hard people are going to be going with how <laughs> yeah. short it is, right? So like... But at yeah. the same time, it'll be so short that I'm like, well, I did my short track. Now do I go ride for an hour again? Or st-? You know what I mean? It'll be pretty. Oh, yeah. Keep riding. <laughs> add, a, add another hour, hour and a half on to the end of this one. 
Um, well, just just okay. ride in another time zone. That's that's what you need to do, Nathan. Just <laughs> just double up on the time zones. <laughs> no, it's not oh a bad idea. Actually, you probably have plenty of people doing it on that day. Actually, I know plenty of people who do race, but I think you'll get even more because of that day being so short. I would think. Yeah, I mean, it, there's still Race. a few intervals there. You know, it's still, uh, sorry, yeah, there's still, you know, six sprints and, and five times up the kicker. So, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good interval session. We do one in the morning, one in the afternoon. What do you think of the power-ups on that one, side? Yeah, um, obviously, the, the random again for this one. Um, so, again, I think it's it, the, the good, the good power-ups. Um, you know, we, we know what we would want for each section, I guess. Uh, there's nothing too controversial there. Um, you know, fairly, fairly middle of the road, I guess. But obviously, what I have enjoyed, I know we'll probably get onto this when we get to race four and five. But when they now they start to have power ups at specific banners, mm. you know, really enjoyed that part as well because it kind of levels the game. You know, it makes it more about skill than than the look, which I know is something we spoke about before on many occasions. You know, and, and on Glasgow, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, there are plenty of opportunity to use all three of those effectively. Um, you know, again, the feather, you can use that on the Clyde kicker to try and create a gap to then drop down the other side. So, yeah, good, strong power-ups. And again, it's, uh, I think if teams want to try and break it down a little bit, they're going to need multiple riders to, to have that continuation after each segment to try and break it down. It, you can't just rely on those two segments on such a short race to break that group down. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Yeah, they're all the interactive kind of old school feather draft yeah. and arrow. And, uh, I think it's going to, those are going to make for also some pretty fast racing because you have all three of those. So that's yeah. going it's, it's to, don't gonna be go afraid. Don't be afraid to hoard a power up. This is like what I've talked to our team so much about as people have like, and it was so funny. I've talked to like, you know, M being one of them, like we're talking about tactics. And I was like, so yeah, if you get this power up, just ditch it. And she's like, what? Just ditch it? I was like, yeah, you just ditch it. Or if you get this one, just save it through these next two banners and use it here. And she's like, oh, should I not use it before the banner? And then I'll pick up a new one. I was like, well, no, because then you don't know what you're going to pick up. Whereas now you know, you've got this. So save that for this point. So I just think like, don't be afraid to hoard a power up too. Like, if you're strong enough to to stay with a group and go through a banner, but just keep that power up that you've got. Yeah, because like it's a points race. That. We didn't say that up front. Yeah. It's a points race. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. race. Res yeah. reserve what's going to get you the points is what you're after. Yeah, so for me, like, if I'm going, it's last lap, I'm going up Clyde Kicker, and I've got an arrow, <laughs> I'm not using that. I don't care that there's a banner there because I might pick up a feather, which is kind of useless in the finish. So just, yeah, don't be afraid, everyone, to just save the power up. No, you don't have to always like ditch it or use it before a banner. So that's my little hot tip. All right. So yeah, we got 100%. two TTTs this next round um, and Watopia's waistband and triple flat loops. Now, let's real quick on the first TTT because there isn't anything really like. I mean, both TTTs. I'm uh, for a second there. I thought they were putting power ups in the second TTT because they had the power ups <laughs> no. listed right underneath them. Oh, I was gosh. like, oh my gosh, that's really going to change everything. <laughs> Let's not go there right? again. <laughs> no. no. So, so uh, I mean, maybe we just talk about both the TTTs just right up front here. I mean, the big topic around team time trials that's been in the community is R two needed and. How is this panel of racers right here split up on that topic? Like two TTTs, one TTT, no TTT. Like where do you, where does everybody stand on that? I'm going to uh, throw that at Anna first. Anna, go. Oh, no. Um, so there's, there's a bit of chat that I've actually seen coming into the live chat, which is like one should be a TTT and one should be an individual time trial. Um, I'm not so much on that because I, I turn up to be with the team. Um, and I guess it's kind of cool. You could cheer on your teammate and make it a bit of a like, you do a lap and then the next person on the team goes and the next person on the team goes and then the next person and it's all of your time added together. Like that would be kind of cool because you're sort of, that's what we do in Zwift Running League. So in Running League, you go out, you do a 3K and then you come back and like tag your next runner and they do and you're all yelling on discord and cheering each other now that would be cool so individual time trial but as a tagged team um 
I uh, I don't. That would get really popular if you, if you had. Yeah, I think team. that'd be cool. Like literally tag named team, it tag team. Trial. Oh my gosh, tag yeah. team time trial, not the triple T, the quadruple T. T T T T. Um, like that would be. I would love something like that just to mix it up a bit. Um, I. Yeah, like I could have just one, but I'm not like, oh, there's two. This is like the worst, the worst mm-hmm. round ever. Um, so yeah, I kind of sit there. Sigh. Yeah, you know what? I used to be the anti TTT guy uh, because I was terrible at them. Um, I'm probably still no better, uh, to be quite honest. And uh, plenty of my teammates will uh, attest to that, I will say. But I actually, I do like them. Um, and whether we need to, I'm not so sure. I think one would be enough. You know, if we look at what happens in grand tours, dare, dare I say, you know, you typically get one and then there is either a prologue or an individual TT. So maybe I, I would like to keep one. It's a team event. The RL is a team event after all. So I think a team time trial make, makes perfect sense. And it's an, you know, it's a skill that you, you've got to acquire and learn, you know, for, for sure. So I like it from that aspect. What I will say, just jumping back to the Zwift Games as well, they talked about exhibition events in the press release. So I went back to them yesterday um, and just said, yeah, what does this mean? Does this mean live events or does this mean you're trialing something new? And what they sort of intimated that is, is basically maybe looking at some new formats potentially mm. um, in there as well. So maybe that's, you know, this might be when we get around to the next season, next winter, you know, we, we've had this opportunity to look at something like that because I have seen some other race series try some different time trialing aspects. You know, we saw it in DRS last time. They had, a, you know, a group start team time trial with drafts, you know, um, and without. So there are, there are things mm. out there that, uh, you know, we could probably just make that second one a little bit different in some way. You know, people, people love Thursday nights. That's the thing. You know, Thursday nights are crazily popular. So I see why we have it in. But I think maybe one team time trial. And then if we, you know, if Martin and the team could have a look at doing something a little bit different, maybe as that, that other event, you know, and hopefully Zwift will start to experiment with that in the new year when we look at the Zwift games. And then, then that'd be awesome. But, you know, do, you know to wrap, wrap it up, I guess, with, with both courses, the, the team time trial courses, you know, they're both in Watopia. We've got, what, triple flat loops and Watopia's waistband. So very similar. We go through the, the Fuegos, um, you know, back down around the volcano, back back into the city in one way or another on both. They're both similar courses, I guess. There's a few little technical bits that, you you know, you've got to worry about as a team, uh, but nothing too major. There's no major climbs in there. There's There's mainly short punchy drags and it's just going to be about you know having a really hot team time trial team who know what they're doing and know work you know they work together and and i guess my advice there is go back and listen to the show with aaron because there isn't any one better place okay. to talk about team time trials than than nathan and aaron, uh nathan and aaron to be fair yeah, yeah. I, I, i'm with you there too and i think the last one is it's kind of like you have a shorter team time trial at 17 or uh, 17 miles or 27 K. And then you have a little bit longer one. So you're going to extend it out a little bit. So it's a little bit more of an epic time trial or, or a longer one. That's pretty really proving the team for the second one. I think that was the idea with triple flat. Like you said, triple flat is essentially just kind of adding a figure eight type thing into the Watopia's waistband essentially. So they're almost the same course. Um, I, uh, I really like that idea. So I would, I would prefer to have one. And then I really like this idea both of you are kind of throwing out there of variation, though, on time-based team event. In some, like you said, with what DRS did or uh, this quadruple T tag team idea with time-based, like these are really cool new ideas that could get thrown into there that we have points racing, we have scratch racing, points racing is a variation on finding ways to sprint and stuff. And yeah, something with time-based stuff there would be pretty cool. And I think there's been some awesome um, innovation in the in the community around that. So it'd be cool to see if something change up, changes up there. Because for me personally, two is a little much. Like I would like to have something a little bit, a, a, a little bit different there. You can do another, you want another time trial, go hang out on Thursdays. Obviously it's super popular, mm-hmm. right? So that's my take. Uh, okay. So last two here, race four, Suki's playground scratch race. Oh yeah. What are you thinking here? I mean, this is going to be, and it's again, same 
with the power-ups, as we saw in race number two in Scotland, you've got the arrow, you've got the draft, you've got the feather, two laps of Sukis, 36K. There's a good amount of climbing, um, and this is a tough course. Asai, what are you thinking here? Yeah, it's... When I first looked at it, um, you know, uh, this was the one I was least excited about. You know, however, because, you know, it's, what, 300 meters of elevation, I think, in total. So I think, oh, okay, there's nothing too much in there. But it, it's very similar to that sort of race one that we did. Uh, yeah, race one, round one, when we we did the, the Mercury 40, where there's nothing major mm. in there, climb-wise. But there's enough, again, if you get the right team tactics and the right draft mechanics, you know, that, that things can happen. And you have got this draggy section as you lead up towards the castle area. You don't go all the way up to the castle on this one, but you go over that bridge and then you've got that switchback place. Uh, yeah, the, the, the switchback turns. And then you're back around the back of the castle and it drags up again there. So that, you know, twice around there is going to test the legs for sure. Um, you know, so again, this will be a really interesting one. And I like the fact that, you know, in some ways we are going back to sort of the, I don't want to say the heritage, but we, you know, it's it's the core thing you do when you start on Swift is scratch racing, um, mm -hmm. you know, and and we've got the three sort of traditional power ups as well, but the teams, as I said before, the teams have evolved. But I think mm -hmm. things are going to happen as you come out. actually once you've gone up that draggy bit at the castle, I think that section after the castle, because then it's pretty fast down the backside as you head towards the the country sprint there as well. You know, we've done that many occasions. Um, again, I think with the, the right team and tactics and moves going up that climb, then again, we're, we're going to see probably, you know, a, a multiple groups on the road with this one. I think, yeah, what you said there is so true, Sai, because you, yeah, same with Mercury 40. I was like, oh, God, seriously? Like, that's going to be so average. But I think because these races, like, without the banner, like having the points banners there, nullifies a lot of interesting tactics because you're basically like well i don't want to detonate my other teammates who are good sprinters and we need to make sure they're there to get fastest through segment and so it kind of like everyone's a bit banner to banner whereas this you look at i mean i'm not an in real life racer like you guys apart from on gravel just fyi but not road <laughs> so you can look at this and go oh this is like yeah 40 kilometers almost there's stuff we can do and you get to i think be more in control of your destiny of what your tactics are because it's not determined by a banner it's determined by the course and the you know the undulations happening and that's what we saw in mercury 40 and that's what i think made it like that first race it was like oh yeah this is like this is the right thing to do one or two so we haven't had i don't think we've had scion t uh, for anything and you mentioned something and hannah's gonna roll her eyes but you said pack <laughs> dynamics and I just, I want to get your opinion or anything that you're seeing that may be good or lacking there because you keep mentioning it when you're talking about things evolving, the teams have evolved. Now at this point, we're able to do new things. If there were anything you'd want to see different right now or not different or tweaked at all about pack dynamics, is there anything be, it, it, looking at these courses, like a course like this? And you're, and it, you know, now that things are at a place where you could make some moves, is there anything that you know, you're like, ah, I just wish that this was a little bit different about it. I just want to get your, cause we haven't had you on since there's been these changes and I'm wondering what your take is. Well, there've been a lot of changes with, with the pack dynamics and, you know, even at the start of round one, we had multiple changes, you know, and there was that, that little bug in there, which made it difficult. Um, you know, and again, the riders were just strung out all over the place. And then we saw when we went to Yorkshire for, in round one, that the, the groups were sort of boxed again. We were flat across the road and there wasn't that lengthening out of, of the groups that we saw. So I think in, in a way, I, I'd like, I'd like a little bit more balance towards what we had at the start for that race one, where there was that bug, but it was a little bit too strong. Cause if you're anywhere near the back, which I generally was when racing with A's that, you know, the minute a gap goes, you're not getting back on that, you know, that was done because it was so difficult to come around riders at that point. Um, so I think the fact I, I would just like to see not going back to that point where you couldn't get around the rider in front of you, but I would like to see uh, just a tweaking back towards that slightly where again, brakes were just, just went 
like that if if the power and balance mm-hmm. was exactly right. I just think it's this time where we are right at this moment in time. It's just gone back a little bit too far to be able to draft because you know you you can draft quite well in this. I'm still seeing breaks happen, but I, I'm convinced that's down to just the riders and definitely. I mean, the pack's speed has definitely slowed down. You know, so there are opportunities, but I just would still like to see a little tweak in there. That again, it's just I, I want to see it strung out more. You know, I do want to see yeah. that happen, but I don't want to make think, it so difficult that if you... i just wondering real quick, do you think that that has anything to do with being able to get by riders? Do you feel like you can get by riders, like, as easily as you should, especially in really high sprint? Because, like, it strings out now in really high power situations. Like, every sprint I've seen that's slightly downhill right now is totally strung out. You no longer have this like all grouped together bunch. The only time you have a grouped together bunch, at least from the things I'm seeing, is when it's a slightly uphill sprint. Um, if they're downhill, it just totally goes into this straight line from what I've seen. I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to pull out like from a couple of really experienced individuals where. So what you're saying, though, is like you think that it's too easy to draft right now and that you need to be able to split that a little bit more at this point yeah I, I, yeah i do I, and i just think i just think we need somewhere in between where we were on those first two races okay. of, gotcha. of this this last round but uh, yeah you know now just the, i do recognize what you're saying you know there are some situations where it, it is getting strung out uh but it may it's just that just that little balance you know but we're we're certainly in a much better place than we were for for last season already so it's, you know we keep seeing this progress and this development um you know and you guys know i'm racing multiple platforms now mm-hmm. um you know just just to try and get a grip and, and yeah, get a view take and there then? yeah okay so you're gonna have a lot of experience across platforms too so like in comparison i'd love to hear yeah. that yeah mm. it's yeah you know i think in terms of the best dynamics out there for, in racing, well, you know, it's difficult to say that. In terms of the best dynamics, if I'm saying what are the most realistic dynamics to what you might see outside, then in, in Develop, I think, are winning that race at this moment in time. You know, that's not to say it's the best because I still don't think it needs to. You know, I know there's the, the group of people who want it to absolutely replicate the dynamics you should feel on the road. I'm not necessarily saying that needs to be the case. I think we should, you know, I think it's right that Zwift started to move more that way because I'm seeing more engagement with um, IRL races, if you like, people who've non-Zwifted before this winter in the UK because it's not what it used to be, you know, whereas pretty much 90% of races we're going to finish in a sprint and, you know, if something went, you could just sit in and go, ah, it's going to come back. That do- that's not the case. Mm. I'm more cautious when I race now. You know, I watched uh, three of my IRL teammates uh, do that one of their first Swift races back this time, and three of—I mean, first of all, they must have been in the wrong category because they—they th- all three of them went on a break and and stayed away, which I don't think even <laughs> they expected. But uh, you know, th- they need to be moving up to A, that's for sure. Uh, but it surprised them, you know, that 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 could actually happen now. So, in, in terms of the other platforms, they're just very different, you know. And uh, I, I think I still come back to Zwift if I just want you know if I just Tuesday night or Wednesday night out of season just want to do a race at the moment I'll I'll come back to Zwift and that's that's what I'll race um you know the community is a big part of that but the dynamics are also part of that because you just know them mm. you know mm. uh, and the others are just very very different um you know but I'm, I'm sure we're going to continue to see all of the in, in this space develop um so yeah maybe I'm sitting on the fence a bit there yeah, I think it's still, interesting. Uh, site, yeah, ahead, it's a. Uh, I think yeah, that's an interesting response. I raced in Velo over our winter, which is your summer, which is kind of where all of my teammates are out IRL. So Zwift is a bit lonely anyway from a community point of view. So I was on in Velo and like I loved it, and I loved the in real life feel. I loved the wind. But then I'm back on Zwift now because uh, I'm just doing workouts and things, and I've you know got ZRL um, race league, but. I was kind of writing actually yesterday thinking like, now what is it? Like, why do I like this? And like, I've got to say, I'm one of those, and maybe I'm like just a consumer, but I was like, there's new roads and there's fun badges to knock off. And I think I'm just a little bit more sucked in by the aesthetics 
of what I'm seeing. Like I'm riding along and I was like, ah, oh, that like shedding pine cone looks really cool. And we talked for half an hour last week about what color purple the new Aztec part was and all of that. And I was like, ah, oh, I think I am. I, I like aesthetically looking at something that's a bit gamey. So it's not real and just escape for a bit, you know, into like a game. Um, and so I think that's why I always come back to Zwift. Yeah, I think so, I think you're exa exactly right. And uh, sorry, yeah, you, actually, I, ju I just will say, if you, if you don't mind, because you know, I know we're going to get onto the the big, the big routes uh, for this time. Just talking about dynamics. I've been racing the Sunday Race Club with my wish. Um, you know, those, those dynamics are very, very different, and they're not perfect by 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 a stretch. Yeah, I want to hear this uh, because know, my experience here, Sai, is like what <laughs> dynamics, and I don't know if they've changed since I've raced, but like. Were, are there pack uh, dynamics on whoosh like Sai? Well, yeah, I mean, I did that <laughs> the first time I did that Sunday race club. I was, yeah, I, I got dropped. I managed to get back on somehow, but I got dropped hard because I was yo yoing in the pack so much. And I think that's what, you know, I've been talking to a few of the elite guys who've been trying my whoosh recently because obviously that's where the worlds are going to be. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. people are going over to try it. It's very different. And yeah, all the dynamics. Uh, they're not where they need to be or they're not where I'd like them to be. I don't think they're bad, but I do think there needs to be a lot of work there because, it, in, and I think also what, what I've experienced is there's a little bit of a delay at the moment. When you apply the power and see your avatar move in game, there's a bit of a delay, which is why when you first start, you do yo-yo a little bit. So you do, it is, you, you have to start from scratch. It's a steep learning curve that you, you have to take to, to master it. What I will say, just to, to plug the virtual velo slightly, is that we we had someone, Matt Smithson, on from My Wish Yes, it's the first time that they've spoken to uh, mm. a podcast in the community. And I did did ask them about the dynamics and what was happening moving forwards. And he did give some insights there. But yeah, you, you are right. It's not where it needs to be, Nathan. And I think, you know, I, I hope that they will do quite a bit of work to get it to the right place by the time we get to you know, whatever the qualifiers or the, the world's loot like, which are going to be October, 2024. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. Did Matt Smith, sorry, was it Matt Smith? Is he the? Matt Smithson. The Smithson, yeah. Matt Smithson. Yeah. Did he sound confident? Like, are they, are they good to do this? Was it, were you, did you leave it kind of going, oh, it's in like safe hands. Like I think like this will be delivered well. Yeah. I think there are two things. Matt, Matt's a cyclist. He's, he's heading up the, the team. What, what I liked as well is they've got, I think he said he got a team of 12 just working on the dynamics. Ah, okay. Um, you know, and so, it, it, you know, and the fact that they said, hey, it, it's not where we want it to be. Um, mm. You know, and they, you know, they, they said, look, this platform was basically built for the community, you know, the, the, the Middle East mm. community, the UAE community, just to get them fit in the, you know, keep them fit in the summit because they can't ride outside. And it wasn't yeah, until so later hot. in that journey that they realized they wanted to go to that. Yeah, exactly. And they wanted to move down this cycle and esports route. So it wasn't a priority at the start for them. Uh, but yeah, you know, Matt's really good anyway. Matt, Matt's from a cycling background. You know, he, he's been riding racing since he was a teen himself. So he, he gets it, you know, from a racer's point of mm -hmm. view. And it's also good to see that, that Matt is also racing in the community. But Matt also was a long time Zwifter. You know, he, mm -hmm. he's raced on, on Zwift. So he, he brings that experience too. And I think he recognizes that, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who try it who have had, you know, well, when did we start? 2014. And, you know, I started in 2017 on Zwift with years and years of experience of the development of Zwift. So when you go and jump on that platform, I'd say for me, it was like, whoa, this is not, not where I'm used to. I'm saying it's not right, but mm -hmm. it's not what I'm used to. And it's not where it probably needs to be. But I do think they've built a, a good team. Hopefully, get it to the point when you know it, it's really great. You know, and uh, yeah, I, I had a lot of confidence oh. in Matt for sure. They got they gave themselves okay. some time too. They've given themselves yeah. some time. I mean, that's a very different like full yeah, year at this point, right? Like, there's a, like you're almost got a year. You're talking October of next year. Totally different time scale. Than oh, is it we October next year? Oh, so it's not like February. I was picturing it in February for some reason. Yeah. Change up. Well, we didn't know, right? That, that was the big issue. 
That was the big issue. No, oh. we didn't know because my wish have never spoke to the community. They've never told us what's going on in <laughs> yeah. a way. You know, so we, I thought the same as you, you know, because obviously we've got the US Nats coming up and the, the, the Canadian yeah. Nationals coming up. But, you know, we've we've seen what's happening with them. That's part of the, you know, we read that the USAC, I know we've, we've diverged a little bit here, but the USAC, you know, with their pathway to the UCI Worlds and who qualifies, which is happening in January, February, <laughs> and, but then the world's not going to take place to October. It's there's a number of things that have got question marks around that, you know, for for me because that that's a big gap. You know, someone qualifying in February to then race in October, but then we didn't know. I'm sure USA Cycling didn't know when it was going to happen. We all assumed it was going to be February, March, like the last one was. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, they, they're giving themselves time. I, I see why they've done that. But I, I, yeah. I, I kind of felt from the discussion with Matt that UCI also guided them to. To push it back towards the end of 2024. So, um, you know, wh whatever reasons they've they that got would be to do really that. interesting. I know we're totally divulged and diverging away, but like, I mean, I don't necessarily dislike it because for 2024, in like, and but now, I mean, that's when it's going to always have to be, unless you have like this really short like turnaround. Then when it, oh man, that's going to be interesting to always be I in the fall of northern hemisphere like you're coming off of and going right into you don't get an indoor league or season kind of thing up underneath your belt and then bam like world championships and like what are we gonna have nationals then every spring then or winter and then that, that'll is, become the thing do you like that won't this just be then like funneling down to people who are esport races they're not yeah. irl races so their off season becomes now and then they're just focusing on esport and they might do some crit races or something with a bit of power, but maybe it's just you're an esport racer. This is your world champs, you know? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Interesting. It'd be interesting. It'd be yeah. interesting how it plays out. I mean, I don't have a problem with it necessarily. It's just it's a it's an interesting calendar. I, it might be cool though, actually. I don't know. Okay, well, it's a lot of time to prep for sure. That's all right. Muckle Yin. All right, we really went all over the place here. Race number five. <laughs> we we're talking about Swift Racing League still. Muckle Yin. And, I, you know, this is a big one, actually. There's a lot going on in this. It's the last points race, not the last race, but you've got like every power up in existence. There's nine mm. different opportunities to get them, and everyone is going into different types of terrain that's why you have so many different power-ups because the steamroller matters for dirt sections you've got major downhills with anvils you've got three feathers you've got one arrow you've got a draft i mean this is all over the place side like absolutely crazy it looks like this could be mayhem of planning i mean this this is like <laughs> yeah like put the connecting dot crazy person you know board up that you're always you know what i mean like of like how am i going to mastermind this together kind of a thing yeah do, doing the recon notes for this it's it's going to be two sides of a4 i think for this one normally i try and keep it on one sheet but you, yeah you're going to have to flip the page on this one i think because there, there are so many opportunities yeah and i, I kind of got some regrets because i think last last season we we did um I can't remember which course it was now around Scotland, but we, we were like, oh, this, this is, there's not enough going on in this course. But, you know, and I think we said, well, we should have the Muckle Yin as, as the final race yeah. or the starting race of, of the season. And I kind of got, now I've reassessed it and, and <laughs> had the experience from round one. I'm kind of thinking, no, nah, you're okay. Just, just put me around Suki's playground and I'll try and survive the, you know, the four minute gentle drag up to the castle there because. Yeah, this, oh. this is a, a total different kettle of fish there. You, you one thing you just mentioned, though, with the power-ups, the, the one thing that I'm curious, and I don't know the answer yet, I'm, I'm going to have to spend some time testing, is the effectiveness of that steamroll, because we know they've reduced the rolling resistance with this last update with road bikes on mm. gravel and on dirt. Oh, uh, I know Eric uh, Schlange call. from Swift Inside. It. Yeah, he, he put an article mm. out yesterday. You know, if you look at, and I think he did the test of uh, the, the Temple Climb. And, and it just makes, for me, now I looked at it, it makes no sense to a bike change at the bottom of no. the temple mm -hmm. climb. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, no, the, the times are just not. too close. Yeah, we can actually talk about that um, because that was a part of our show notes, actually. So, what, let, like, since there's some dirt sections and some of this stuff, like, bike swap is just gone. Like, we all agree, right? Like, it's, there's, there's yeah. no reason. Yeah, it's almost, unless 
There was one section he said going from bottom to top, like you said, sign of a temple climb, and it ends on the ends temple at the climb. Top. Yeah. And that would be the yeah, only yeah. time maybe take a gravel bike up that, and that's a very rare circumstance. And you're taking a pretty big risk, even with that, because the bike, the road bikes travel so fast. And if the pack goes away from you, and you're that those people are getting a draft still with a road bike, yeah. and you're only gaining a couple of seconds. I mean, ugh, totally different. No, no. How do you guys I, feel I, I about look, that? I looked at the time about differences, the changes. Like now that there is no bike swap, do you like a bunch of people seem to really like it because I think the general population enjoy just riding with some speed. It felt too slow. Let's just enjoy the mm-hmm. dirt roads that are there. I mean, where, where do you two fall on these changes? I sit quite firmly in the camp of there should be, and this is, uh, this is what I came back with pack dynamics as well, is there should be the general just riding mode. And then there's like a race mode and in race mode that you have gravel is way faster on dirt roads. And you have pack dynamics that allow breakaways and there's a lot more going in on a race mode versus a general, I'm riding around Zwift in a group ride and I want to be able to ride jungle circuit, not at two kilometers an hour on my Tron bike, you know? So that's where I, that's where I fall. Yeah. I'm just thinking back to the first time when we, when I ever presented a bike swap as a, as a possibility. And it, it was when Mercury opened, of course, because it was that temple climb. And, and I could, I remember like 90% of the community were like, no, you know, you couldn't do this in real life and, you know, things like that. But then, you know, you, you see the pros in the Giro this year, you know, that were, was bike swapping at the, the foot of climbs, you know, even on time trials. <sighs> You know, yeah. let, let alone it didn't. It didn't always work out for him, but because uh, I think G lost, lost the 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 Giro for, because of that, if I remember rightly, about fourteen seconds. Oh, it's uh, a shocker! He's got to tell me as well. Change. Yeah. So you know, I but I was always of the the sort of the group that was like, no, th- this is part of the gamification for me. You know, I, I prefer this style of gamification than you know having the the, the speed bumps on the road, you know, and and, and those kind of things. For me, this is the, the gamification side. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit upset, actually, that they've, they've created, you know, the gap on that temple climb. It's less than 10 seconds difference between a, a mountain bike and, and the Tron, for example. It's just, there's no way you're going to risk it um, from this point of view. So, it, for me, that's a bit of a shame. I can't really, I don't know why they've done it. I don't know. You know, maybe it is just because, like I say, when you're on training or group rides, it feels sluggish and slow. But hey, guess what? Dirt and mud is like that. So just just accept it. I know you can't put as many Ks in on a ride, but uh, but I think it's good that we have that that variety. So yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of making it uh, so essentially that bike choice is not an option now. I think it I think it might have to do with the new roads and the encouragement to use the jungle more. And that you're going to try and get more people over there. And if people, and I think there's probably the perception and there's probably good numbers on this, that because of how slow things are over in that section of course, it wasn't getting ridden much. And so it probably is a general population ride things more. Like you said, Anna, I'm not, I I think you have a good point. I think uh, you have a good point. We come, if we come back to your logic with your, you know, whatever you're talking about before about apples and oranges and that thing yeah. is like, so with the jungle, I don't then, stand on this the... side. Okay. I'm not, I'm like, I'm just playing devil's <laughs> no, advocate thinking, over here. <laughs> but I'm thinking with like the jungle, if the key issue is they want more people to ride that is just make the jungle roads more fast moving and keep everything else the same so just change that section of jungle so it's like mm. harder packed ground and you move a bit faster you know like mercury where there's that sand that you know as you yeah. found some of it's a bit slower but just change the surface of the jungle and you've solved a problem without taking away all the fun of going through your garage and being like oh i need that gravel bike because i've got that race coming up and i want to do a bike swap now it's like when would i ever ride a gravel bike again in game yeah there isn't really any that that was one thing when I was reading the Zwift Insider article, I was like, all these bikes are useless. Like I was just like, <laughs> yeah. what, like I was just like, there, there's no reason to ride them anymore, you know? And so yeah. if you're going to have other types of bikes, they have to have a, a, a purpose. Like I'm not going to take my, yeah, anyway. So it's, it just makes, 
I think what you just said there is like changing the road surfaces and maybe a little bit would have been more toward rather than eliminating the function of entire fleets of, you know, of bikes, especially if we're ever going to have future road, uh, more mountain bikes and gravel bikes, et cetera. So good point. Where do I sit on it? I don't know. I like, I don't like traveling slowly in the jungle. I don't at all, but I do like the bike swap and I do like that, that idea. And it's a very, people get pretty passionate about that when I noticed though. I did that post in um, fastest bike swap in the West, you know, and I, had, I was kind of being a little proud with like how whatever I did like my, to my teammate. And my teammate was like, was that a macro? Like, what the heck? How did you do that so fast? And I felt all cool. And so like I posted it in the <laughs> Facebook group. And like people were like, that's not fast. And like some people are like all into it. And, like I got a macro that does this, and, da, 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 and I did mine in yeah. two seconds. And then a couple other people were like, man, total grouch, like about me and my bike swap, <laughs> and like this is <laughs> stupid. You can't do that, and whatever. And like then I harken back to there were time we go all the way back to when you could do bike swaps moving. I don't know if we talked about this. Oh you got, yes, way that was back. Awesome. Did Sai? Did you know <laughs> yeah. that? Sai, did you know you that no, way no, back in the day? You. Okay, so the first time we went to the top, the, the first time bike swapping came up as even like why would you even do it was because if you caused a breakaway when Watopia Mountain first launched, there was a huge conversation about TT bikes in breakaways because if if you got a breakaway, the TT bike, if you're alone or a solo rider, it's the best thing to have to the finish line. Because it's just downhill, and then you're hitting the Watopia Piers, and if you're in a break, you want the TT bike. And over the top, you were able to just hit one-button macros while you were moving and swap to the TT bike. You didn't have to stop. And I actually went to a, 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 a visit. I visited headquarters and i was talking to mayfield and i was like yeah on the last broadcast we had this da, 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 and kim little and casey shum did this bike start and he was like wait what did you do and he was like <laughs> and he was like wait a second and like totally not kidding you like the next week you had to stop like for bike Aww. swaps i wrecked it for everybody Aww. but i still have that fault. i still have the the recording it's on one of the old streams where like it was like a dzi like old school um, team that was a lot, one of the first ever jerseys. They were doing these mountain climb competitions. Anyways, we have super digressed, but that was the original bike swap, man. And now it's dead. We've come full circle, and now the bike swap. All right, bike swap. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so if we round back to so that's the final points race. I Buckle would I Michael Yin. 23.7k, 14.7 miles, 282 elevation. My biggest tip for people listening to this is like, go and do your homework on this one, especially because the power-ups are allocated. Um, like I said at the beginning, like, do you want to save any of those and use them later? When do you want to, um, like, when do you want to have an anvil? Do you need a steamroller anymore? I'm hoping you'll cover that in your recon, Sai. You'll tell us about that uh, the steamroller with the reduced um, rolling resistance. So the Tron would obviously be probably the best choice here. But um, yeah, this this one I'm looking at, I'm like, whew, it's a lot of homework. Yeah, it's, it's, and this is all going to be about the team because, you know, seven yep. segments. I mean, it's straight out, straight out of the block as well because you leave the pen and you're straight into that sprint. <laughs> um because you know, again if if that if the segment is, so is even it's within so the leader <laughs> like, oh like, true yeah like you just like right like it's literally like all right guys like i always get surprised by that one like especially in a points race and you're just like okay guys and like no warm-up no nothing just boom go for the <laughs> yeah. points right down a downhill sprint it's hilarious yeah, it's like, wh where's everyone going so early in this race <laughs> oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a sprint Okay. Yeah, but awesome. uh, okay, okay, well, you, you, if you yeah, look exactly at right. yeah, just team planning. Sorry. If you look at the whole series or the whole round, six races, Sai, which are you looking at and going, yep, this is the one for me? <laughs> well, none of them in category A for me, to be quite <laughs> honest. But, uh, it, but, but in, I, I think race one, you know, to be honest, I, I like the challenge of actually mm. and Muckle Yen because that's. That skur climb on the dirt. Well, both both sides of that again, it's not they're not massively long. 
But again, you've just mm. got to dig deeper than you've ever dug before for those, you know, few minutes. Um, you know, and, and I like races that do that. You know, you're not just relying on a sprint. You're not just relying on the, you know, the engine of the FTP guys. But those climbs that are between anywhere between a minute and five minutes, those are the ones I like to see because you know you're going to suffer. You know, and you guys are, are sadists like me. You you want to so you want to get to the end of the race and 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 not be able to stand up and lie down for the next thirty minutes just while you're trying mentally and physically figure out what's just going on. So, the first one with Fox Hill, I'm really looking forward to because it's not the you know, just the, the brutal, repeated nature of the muckle yin. You've just got four to six minutes, I think, <laughs> dependence on your, your your profile to to try and survive and focus what how you're controlling your power and then that, that last one. But, yeah, but then I also said I like Glasgow crit circuit. So I like all of those are, are good races. I think we've got a good selection. Suki Playground's the only one for me where I'm like, eh, you know, I can. I, I don't mind sitting out that one. The rest, I just want to be involved and in, and in, in get racing because once again, as we did with the last round, I think there's a good choice in courses on this one. Muckle Yin, Richard Berry, letting us know best race course on Zwift. Next esports jumping in here. Yeah, and I'll have to say, yeah, he should know. That'll yeah. be my favorite. That'll be my favorite as well. I think for this, you too, Anna. You're on. You're Muckle Yin. Yeah. You're all about yeah. it. I'm Michael yeah. Young. I'm all about it. I love it as an event organizer and I love it as a racer. It's yeah, perfect. It ticks every box for me. Yeah. And I like all Anna, the will you, will you like be that. racing that one or sorry, Anna, will you be racing oh, that I'm, one or DSing that one? No, I am full noise racing this series. Yes. <laughs> but but from I remember you're I'm you're in. you're like a DS when you're racing anyway, right? So it's your your Discord's <laughs> gonna be full gas, I think, on that one. I'm a bit of a chatter. Yeah, uh, I won't lie. I talk pretty much from the banner to the finish and then for about another hour and a half afterwards. So yeah, <laughs> there'll be awesome. there'll be a lot of If chat. you haven't seen Anna's <laughs> feature on our Instagram for what her DSing is like, <laughs> oh, it's so good. I need, I like want a soundbite of that that we can just like bring in sometimes. It's such, it's such a good. No, the Gabby well, we, train. We, we, we spoke True. about. Nice headband, by the way. We, we spoke nice about. Headband. <laughs> So, social media shorts, you know, I, I think you could probably do a month's worth of shorts based on just clipping out from, from Anna's uh, Twitch stream, I think. Wait, that should be a feature on our Instagram, like DS shorts. Like DS. I'll, like, uh, little, I'll take a little... short from, um, <laughs> from yesterday of me just crying in my last effort. And actually, I had someone message me because my son's coming into one of my workouts once a week and he sits there on his little bike and he chit chats the whole time. And someone like did a short for me and sent it to me and was like, this was like the highlight of my night. It was Aww. him just talking about something totally random, but riding nice. along with me. It was really cute. Oh, some of the kids stuff for sure is like, the long standing, long standing. Don't go in the lava. Don't go in the lava. So okay. Uh well any wrap up, I guess that's it for us. I mean the idea of what is the best course, it's gonna be the Mokul Yin for all of us. We are all liking mm -hmm. it. Uh I mean the size kind of on the London loop, it sounds like a little bit, but he's coming over to the Mokul It's a good Yin course, I just don't like racing it. <laughs> <laughs> What's coming up for you next, Sai? What do you got going on? Are you still traveling or what? Yeah, I'm still I'm still trying. So like I, I was I was in Italy this week. Um I was testing a new a new bike from from Techno Gym. We were looking at some uh fabrics in, in the factories for the, the clothing brand in Italy. Um and yeah, and obviously you know, like like you guys, just there's so much going on in the cycling esports world. You know, I, I have this regular nine to five job which has just been suppressed every day by press releases or stories. And you know, I, I you know, my wife is constantly what well, what what were you doing last night till <laughs> till midnight again? Just you know, but it's it's either you know processing orders or just trying to figure out what what videos and content and and trying to you know narrow down the stories. So yeah, so much going on. But I'd say the the, the big thing is this you know if if you don't mind that the virtual velo podcast that is out there with my wish really interesting chat. You know if you if you're interested in in getting some of the information on what's going to happen with the worlds and so on moving forward, then uh, go and take a listen to like that. I think we put that out last night. So. Yeah, and you're also a sponsor and, uh, of some of the uh, some of the cool uh, teams that are out yeah. there. Lava Velo sounds like it's going pretty good. 
it, you know, that's been the highlight of, uh, of the last couple of weeks is, uh, yeah, li listening to the broadcast and hearing the brand on there. You know, it's, uh, it's, mm. it's been awesome. So, you know, BL13, that first week, obviously, with, you know, the breaks, those guys are always making things a little bit different. And, yeah, just you know, I got to say, Sai, that Diamond. team has stepped up, man. Like, I think, like, Haven't they? they have yeah. stepped up. I'm really impressed. I thought about them this morning going into the um racing you know in the past they were a team that would get lucky with some pretty awesome tactics now they're a force to be reckoned with from what i'm seeing and uh and they're also a really great community support organization we're broadcasting their wednesday you know series now as well and love what they're doing there so um pretty cool like really cool yeah, to see what you guys are doing yeah, they're, they're, they're a great, you know, great bunch and, you know, very small team as well, which, which is great. But, the, you know, the community and the vibe there was really good. And, and yeah, exactly like you said, you know, I, I got involved with them, wanted to support them. You know, I, I reached out to them and said, look, how can I support you guys? Because they were so innovative. You know, it's not like they had, ma you know, they've got some good riders, but there wasn't like one standout mega engine that was just going to be up there, you know, wh whatever team he was with. They, they've had to work for it. Um, yeah, and but then of course I have gone the other way because we've got Abus Synergy also riding <laughs> ah. level Velo, you know. So uh, yeah, we've got you know guys like um, Paradines and and Lennart, of course last night just just doing the job at the moment. I think you know they've basically won the last last three rounds on the men's side. So yeah, that that's also good. Yeah, he's it, still so, really so excited you're both to see sides. Lennart last he's night. Playing, he's with the Force and the Death Star over here. Yeah, got two with, music with the themes in my the, background the, uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we we we're getting good coverage and um yeah it's it, it's going well I'm I'm really pleased but uh, you know we we want to keep doing that as well it's it's important that um I've always personally wanted to put into the community with the recons and so on that and and it was the same when we started the brand I wanted to get to the point where we could not just support teams but a, you know, I've just got a, a a young guy um who is just starting out on his cycling journey on in his cycling esports journey at 16 and you know we we're, we're going to support him so we also want to do that with with younger athletes and people who want to get into the sport as well. So that that's the next one is just trying to find some individuals that hopefully might make it onto these teams eventually as well. But if if we can help a little bit on the way with with either clothing or funding or turbos or something like that in the past, then we're we're going to try and do that as well. So I gotta say I gotta encourage that a lot because um, youth development is so. In my degree, we studied specifically my problem i had a problem which was i was a professional cyclist ranked number one in my state and the number one football player was making a hundred times amount as i was and i was like what the heck is going on here why is that happening and i studied it i literally studied it and was like and then created a nonprofit in order to solve the problem that's where vision cycling came out of was to create structures in culture that build sport and sport is anyways the youth is how you do it with mentors around them you build sport with youth and from there they become the next generation and like i think that's absolutely awesome that you're doing this that for this sport because if we do get a wave of that you know what i mean where it starts creating more and more and more and it can build that's what's going to do it but you got to create a culture you need the local baseball diamond you need the local basketball court you need the local with people around them creating a tradition around it so i'm really excited to hear that you're doing that pretty cool si yeah no thank you we're, we're, we're absolutely trying to trying to do that and uh the, the thing is very very briefly it's not a lot of these young athletes have been involved when i work for timex ironman you know we get a lot of athletes approaching us for sponsorship it's you know, we, we offer kit and clothing, but it's not what they need necessarily. You know, no, no one needs 10 watches mm. up their arm. You know, if they're starting out in the world of triathlon, they need cash, you know, and they need support in getting the equipment, the other equipments, you know, not, not necessarily the level of our clothing, for example, you know, that's not what they need. So that's what we're trying to do is just create a little bit of a bursary in some way that I'm not saying, yeah, we'll support you. Here's some shorts and a jersey, but what, what do you need? You know, how can we help you to get training more? You know, do you need contacts you need coaching and then we could use the bursary to to support in whatever area the, the young you know young athlete needs essentially so yeah we'll uh, we'll keep trying so uh you know if, if, if anyone is in that situation then i'm not saying we we can definitely help but we would like to sort of 
try and help where we can, then just hit us up on the on the social media channels, Instagram, TikTok, wherever. Right on. All right, Sai. Well, we've probably gone way over. Thanks a lot for tuning with us, Sai. Make sure to go check out the virtual Thanks for me, guys. network and everything. And uh, go uh, watch all the recons for ZRL over on his YouTube channel. Sai, I'll talk to you soon. Well, that went, of course, way longer than usual. Always does. <laughs> so many tangents. Yep. <laughs> yes. There we go. We win. Well, people. I mean, you get Sai on, <laughs> and tangents. it's like. We're all really passionate about this space and there's mm-hmm. so much going on that it's like, well, yeah, we'll talk about ZRL. Yeah, right. Like we talk about ZRL and every yeah. other thing <laughs> that's on the that menu. That comes up. So. And I messaged Nathan during that and I'm like, I can smell dinner upstairs and I'm like, I am so freaking hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll like, push a couple okay. of these things to our next time. Real quickly, the jersey pick here. Real quick. It is the Zwift. Uh, you know, we have some artwork on it, so we got to get it out here. This is a really good really well done good job to gabby on this zwift starter jersey what do you rate it anna yeah so i'm not like so i'm rating it relatively high because i really like the concept of what they did here i think it was really cool i actually twitch streamed it and a few people came in and was like what is this i didn't even know you could do these things i was like i think zwift needs to get it out there a bit more maybe it's part of an induction package with new zwifters i hope it is because you go in and there's like five things you have to do it's like a little quest uh so you had to do a workout which was so i did it all as like my easy recovery ride so you did an easy 25 minute workout which had a ton of like great info in it like this is what ftp is and this is what the green bar means and it was awesome uh then you did a 10 minute uh pace partner and at 10 minutes it came up with a message and said you've achieved you know, step number two. And then you had to do a 10 minute free ride, but it was tutorial wise. Like, so the screen actually came up with nothing on it. And then it just added things individually to tell you what they meant. Like, this is the mini map and this shows this, this is the other riders that are around, da, 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 da. Uh, And then you had to do a race um, and a group ride. And so, Hmm. yeah, those five things. And then you unlocked this starter kit, which I just really, Light. I put a bit of effort into that accessorizing there, but yeah, it was more so. I'd give the I'd give the kit like a seven, and I'd give the concept of a quest kit like a nine. <laughs> you really went into the accessories there, like seriously. Yeah, I, this is like <laughs> I know. it's really good, actually. I mean that pink, yeah. a- pinkish, or what is that uh, uh, magenta accent going on there? That's that's pretty sick. I I gotta say, with that light blue, well done. Yeah. yeah. So I give that Thank an you. eight around yes. with the accents on there. I'll give it an eight. So, well, what are you up to for the next week, real quick, Anna? I'm doing some triathlon training tomorrow. I'm actually, because I'm in love with my gravel bike, I'm actually doing the crit that we do on my gravel bike because <laughs> I'm like, I love my grave bike so much. Uh, and got a big, actually, I'm not on the show next week. So I put a note in there oh, in our show notes. Okay. Just so <laughs> yeah. you know, everybody. Just so you all, know, everybody. Now that we all um, know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Nathan might be solo. I'm sure he'll find a friend to come on. Uh, I'm away at a big training camp. So we've got our big like Ironman events coming up soon. So I'm taking 10 athletes down to the race course and we're doing three intense days of like swim training, bike training, run training, transition training, nutrition stuff, a, a whole bunch. So it's going to be a huge three days. So I'm kind of, it'll be a lightish week other than ZRL to make sure I'm good for that. I'm going to be maybe doing Zwift Racing League. It's just rehab for Nathan. We're hitting the gym and supporting Gabby as much as I can right now in uh, coaching her through ZA workouts and getting ready for next week with Zwift Grand Prix. Um, Now with Zwift Games and just the way that she's been riding, you know, just a lot of my focus after getting a little bit injured now has transitioned to just like on um, Gabriella and like where she's going right now in these couple of months. And then um, Mm. trying to get my body to where I can like really train after today. I'm like, okay, I don't know about like really in what I take as training, but I'll at least get back on the, like I am shooting for the next Zwift Grand Prix though. Like I'm hoping to be fully ready by then. Maybe not totally completely as fit as I'd want to be, but that's, you know, that's kind of where I'm at and what I'm up to. So everything's kind of up in the air. And as far as like Zwifting and focus is going is like, finding things to do that keep me interested that get me riding right now, because you know, when you're hurt, 
the motivation can kind of be a little bit waning, you know, like, so finding that, but I think like there'll be that real quick turnaround point. It's kind of the Rocky moment where like, I don't know if you guys from number three, from Rocky three, if you know it, like, what's the matter with you? Do you guys know that line? <laughs> what's the matter with you? Like, and like, and like that, like in, in that turnaround when like in Rocky three, if you guys know what I'm talking about, like, or get a little bit of Mick in my head. So that, that'll come, that'll come around and there'll be, that moment will come. But right now it's like, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, I'm a little hurt still. So getting out of that and yeah, that's what's up with me. So, well, everybody, thanks a lot for, if you've been listening live, we really appreciate all the comments. There's been tons of people. I really appreciate everybody coming in and hanging out with us live. If you didn't know, and you're just catching this, this is a podcast. You can head on over to ZwiftCommunityLive.com and check out the podcast tab to find it there or anywhere that you download your podcast. Swear, search the rap and Zwift. You'll find it real quickly. This has been episode number 69. We've been live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Follow, like, subscribe, comment, do all those good things anywhere that you are following along for those. And we'll be back. Well, I'll be back next week, it sounds like, for episode number 70 from Anna and I. As always, appreciate you very much and right on.